Here is another sample Alex proof. This time the uh, objective is proofs involving angle congruence. So let's start with the given. Um, just in case you didn't watch my other video, what I mentioned in the segment proofs video is your process is often similar on these in that I would start with the given then you're probably gonna use an addition postulate. So for um, angles, that's angle addition. For segments, that's segment addition. And then you're gonna use substitution and you'll probably get to what you wanna prove. So we're probably going to be using that same process on this one. Let's look at what I just wrote. Measure of angle D E F, okay, which is a larger whole, um, is equal to the other whole. And then we're given that one of the parts is congruent. We eventually want to prove that angles two and three are congruent as well. Anytime we're relating parts and wholes, we're going to be using an addition postulate, in this case, the angle addition postulate. So the parts making up angle D, E, F are angles one and two. The correct notation is measure of angle one plus measure of angle two equals the measure of angle D, E, F. Not congruence, not angle one, but the measure of angle one. If you don't type this in correctly, Alex will not let you move on. I'm not having enough room, so yeah, that's okay. I'll just write it like this. Oh, I wrote one twice. Okay, that is angle addition. Okay, we call it angle addition postulate. Alex is gonna call it angle addition property. Same difference, right? Okay, let's do the same thing over there. So we would also have measure of angle three plus measure of angle four equals the measure of angle um, HGF. Also by the angle addition postulate or property. Okay, now we've made some statements. Let's relate one of the given statements with what we just wrote. Um, one of the given statements was that the measure of angle DEF equals the measure of angle HGF. Well, I see DEF again and I also see HGF twice. So we can substitute DEF's equivalent expression in here and HGF's equivalent expression in here. Then we would have the statement measure of angle one plus measure of angle two equals measure of angle three plus measure of angle four. Anytime we replace that substitution, okay, and then look, we now have used our uh, first given. We haven't used our second given yet, so let's. And I always say highlighting makes a world of a difference for us visual learners out there. So I'm gonna highlight statement two in green, and I want to use statement two in what I just wrote, statement five. So in statement five, um, I do see both angle one and angle four. I can choose one, it doesn't matter which one. And instead of writing the measure of angle one, I can replace the other thing highlighted in green, measure of angle four. So let's rewrite statement five. Uh, 
for statement six, but instead of the measure of angle one, I'm going to write its equivalent measure, the measure of angle four. Otherwise, I am rewriting exactly what I wrote in statement five. All I did was substitute that one little part. And now look back at statement six, you'll see there's something on both sides of your equation. It's measure of angle four. Let's subtract it from both sides. If we subtract it from both sides, we're gonna be left with the measure of angle two equals the measure of angle three. And hey, that's what you wanted to prove. And what we did is we subtracted. So that's the subtraction property of equality. But Alex will call it addition and subtraction properties.